the historic Jacksonville Cemetery located in Jacksonville, Oregon. The cemetery was established in the late 1800s. I grew up in the historic town of Jacksonville, Oregon in the late 60s and through the 70s. My parents have a family plot up here. My dad passed away in 1988 and was buried up here on the hill just below the flagpole overlooking the town. My 86 year old mother recently passed away just a little over a week ago and two days ago she was buried right next to my father. Um, so today we're going to go up there after I finish work and view the uh, the family plot. It's going to be the first time that I've returned since the uh, funeral two days ago. I have been employed in Jacksonville for the last uh, eight years and I work pretty close to the cemetery and I can actually see it out of one of the windows. I can actually see uh, my parents family plot if it wasn't for the trees in the way. But the reason for this video is I know a lot of people here in the cemetery and I wanted to walk around and just kind of film their their graves and headstones and share a little bit of information about each and every one of them. Okay, we're getting ready to head up to the cemetery. It has not rained yet, but it just is very threatening looking. So there used to be a nice big entrance gate here and they took it down apparently to kind of rebuild it and widen this area. So apparently it will be coming back. Mom used to walk the dogs up the cemetery road here. Uh, she used to walk the dogs in the 80s. We lived in that house right down there where that white van is at. That's where we grew up as kids. There was, there was no parking lot here or nothing like that. grave is right there, straight ahead of me, and here's Mom and Dad's grave. This is the first time I've been up here since the funeral on uh, Tuesday. My dad, born in 1928, died on November 20th, 1988. There's a picture of him. That's their actual wedding picture. hasn't been up here to put the date of death yet. But that's it. That's where she lies now, right next to my dad. Uh, I have spent uh, the last two days she was alive, the Monday and Tuesday, uh, 21st and 22nd. I spent probably close to 15 or 16 hours at the assisted living with her. Uh, she talked to us a little bit on Monday, my sister and I, and then on Tuesday she was unable to really talk at all. And I don't think she even knew who we were. Uh, but I, I left there in the afternoon and it was the last time I saw her. And I'm so glad I spent those two days with her. I somehow just knew it would be her final, her final day. Okay, well, let's go ahead and walk around here and have a look at uh, some of the people that I know in this. We'll just do this bottom section today. Here is Arthur Corbin, who I didn't know, but I knew the family. This is the parents of the family that died in the 80s, Fred and Martha. I knew uh, several of the kids, even though they were my mom's age. She went to school with them. This is Leonard Corbin, who died just a few years ago. Eleanor Corbin, who I didn't know. Gary Corbin, who I did not know. Raymond Corbin, who I met a time or two. 
Corbin, who I did know, who was good friends with my mother, she would come over in the 70s and spend time with my mom. Corbin, Corbin, who I did know, he died in 2012. His father was, was Arthur Corbin, the first Corbin that we looked at. Cut. And Trey Corbin, that I did not know either. They're all buried very close to Mom's grave. And right next to the Corbins is Harold Witten, who was an old, uh, old guy here in town. I knew him, and uh, he was a... Uh, he was around a lot. He had kids. And, oh my goodness. Eric. Well, let's go to Tony Witten, who was Dwayne Witten. I didn't really know him. He died in 93, born in 56. Eric Witten, I went to school with him. He died in March of 16. I didn't know he had passed away. I'll be darned. Tina Witten, I didn't know she had passed away either. She was, I believe, in the, my sister's grade. I'm going to have to tell her about that. Alma Christine Witten, probably the mother. I'll be darned. I didn't know Eric Witten or Tina had passed away. Dick Leg, my dad knew Dick Leg, uh, Richard Leg. He died in 89. He owned the Texaco gas station that used to be here in town. I remember when his son, Charles Lake, died. He was uh, quite a bit older than me. He was killed in a Volkswagen bug accident, if I remember right. Larry Lowe, he went to, he was a grade ahead of me in school. He died in 2010, born the same year I was, 1960. Wayne Maxim, Maxson was his grandfather. He was a sexton up here at the cemetery for many, many years in the 1970s and 80s. Mom's grave is over there. We've, we're just covering this area down here, but we still gotta go down below here and look around. Okay, I don't believe I know anybody over here. Uh, that's where the shops are for the cemetery. And down here we have the Modelins. I didn't really know the parents. Richard and Rosalind. Rosalind. They both died in 2007, just a few months apart. But I did know the children. And I went to school with one of them. And then one was great below me and one was great above me. And this is a family plot. The Hardy family plot. Mrs. Hardy, Maud Hardy, was my second grade school teacher here in Jacksonville. I delivered newspapers to their house and they, she died in 1994. Her husband died in 83. And they have a son born in 1927, but apparently he hasn't uh, passed away. Yet. You know, it seems to me that I heard that he had passed away, but I don't know. According to this, he is not. This is my grandparents' grave on my dad's side. It is an unmarked grave, and it's obviously unkept. The person. It is supposed to be taking care of it. Uh, pretty much vanished with all the uh, with all the money that my grandparents had. My grandmother is buried on this side, I believe. My grandfather was to be buried on that side, but he was cremated and put on top of her. And that's not what was supposed to happen. But the person that was in charge did it the cheap way and then ran off with everything. And it's a big, long, sad, ugly story, but that's just the way it is. Uh, he knows who he is. If he's watching this video, you know who you are. 
We're getting close to mom's and dad's grave again. Here we have Kelly Berg, who I knew. Uh, she was a grade or two younger than me and she was killed in 1981 in a car accident in the Applegate area, I believe. And right next down here, next to the Whittons, above the Whittons, is a cassette uh, family plot. I did not know Eugene or Mary, but I went to school with their son, Brian. And he apparently was found dead in his car in Northern California on April 26, 1986. I don't know exactly what happened to him. Uh, I've always wondered what happened to Brian, but here he lies. So we're down here at the end of this little roadway. My mom's grave is right up there. This is a grave of Lulu Withers. Uh, in the 1960s and 70s, we had a police chief here named Frank Carter. He's a very one-of-a-kind, gruffy old police chief, and this is his sister. Lulu was a restaurant here, here in Jacksonville. She owned uh, the Cottage Kitchen at one time, which is no longer here. She also started Lulu's Restaurant which is no longer here, and that must be her husband, I would assume, I don't know. My younger brother had put a black fence up around the, my parents' plot uh, oh, 25 or more years ago. Uh, the cemetery did a course so mom could be buried. Rest in peace, mom and dad. That's it for now. Hope you enjoyed this, and I'll be back with a part two.